Okay, we are back with some writer and we're on chapter five and I am going to um, kind of scan a little bit of this chapter. Um, it talks a little bit about his, the beginning of the New Yorker and it talks about the magazine. So the magazine started and they weren't really sure what it was going to be and he sent in a few things, but then he sent um, a poem to another magazine called The Conning Tower and they printed his poem. And that caught the attention of the New Yorker editor. And so the New Yorker editor of the fiction section, um, whose name is Catherine Sargent Angel, wrote him a letter and said, the New Yorker looks with jealous eyes at the verse that led off the conning tower this week. And we all like it so much that we say, alas, that you did not send it to us. Mr. Ross and I are wondering whether you won't call up some day to have lunch with us, perhaps, or at least arrange to drop in at the office to discuss various thoughts we have in mind for you in the connection with the New Yorker. Wouldn't you do us the favor of giving us a ring? So now he's going to get hired part-time as a writer, and he has a little desk, and he's young, and he has a mentor, and this is his mentor, Thurber. He really inspired him. So he becomes important. And then I'm going to start reading um, here. This is Catherine, Sergeant Angel. And this is where it kind of picks up. Most of the staff worked a typical 10 to 5 day, but Andy came and went as he pleased. He sometimes took off from Maine without telling anyone where he was going, but he always made his deadlines. One spring, Andy was traveling home from Virginia on a train and fell asleep. He dreamt of a mouse who was fully dressed in dapper clothing with a hat and cane. Andy wrote it all down. Later, when one of his 18 nieces and nephews wanted a story, Andy would read it aloud. He named the mouse Stuart and kept the story in a drawer, sometimes adding new episodes. At the New Yorker, Andy and Thurber, that's the man I showed you a picture of, and Catherine Sergeant Angel became fast friends. And though it didn't happen right away, Andy and Catherine fell in love. Catherine, however, was married with two children, but her marriage had been unhappy long before she met Andy. Eventually, she got divorced. Her children from that marriage, Roger and Nancy, would live with their father during the school year and with Catherine in the summers. Finally, one autumn, Andy and Catherine were married in a small ceremony, just the two of them and their dog, Daisy, a present from Thurber. But Daisy got into a scuffle with the minister's dog. It was a very nice wedding, Andy wrote. Nobody threw anything, and there was a dog fight. <laughs> they both went back to work the next day. And here's the picture of her, and he writes a poem for her. And here, this is so interesting, because the poem is about a spider's web. And uh, he entitles it Natural History. I'll, I'll um, post these poems that he wrote for you. So that one's about a spider's web. In May, they learned that Catherine was pregnant. Andy was so overcome with joy, he didn't know how to express himself. So he had their, their dog, Daisy, write a letter to Catherine. So he's really writing it, but he's saying it's from Daisy. What White feels, he told me, this is what the dog is saying, is a strange, queer, tight, little twitchy feeling around the inside of his throat whenever he thinks that something is happening, which will require so much love all on the account of you being so wonderful. In December, they had a son, Joel, and they call him Joe. Okay, and here she's walking Joe with Daisy, and he writes this poem for Joe. Someday, when I'm out of sight, travel far, but travel light. Stalk the turtle on the log. Watch the heron spring the frog, spear the frog. Find the things you only find when you leave your bag behind. Raise the sail your old man furled. Hang your hat upon the world. Joe, my tangible creation, happy in perambulation. Work no harder than you have to. Do you get me? So he's giving advice to his son, like go out there in the world, make your way, see everything you wanna see, like your old man taught you. And then um, this word right here, perambulate means to like wander around, especially on foot, travel, and, and kind of just see things. And you know, he drove cross country and did that. And so he's um, 
advising his son to do that. And then he also wrote this about his son. To a writer, a child is an alibi. If I should never in all my years write anything worth reading, I can always explain that by pointing to my child. So he's saying like a child gives you an excuse, an alibi is like a reason or an excuse. If he writes anything worth reading, it's because he had a baby and he got inspired. And he wrote it for him. Okay. Um, even though America was in the Great Depression, a time when many people lost their homes and businesses and had trouble finding work, Catherine and Nanny kept their jobs at the New Yorker and were paid well. Catherine was especially lucky as few women had jobs in publishing at that time. One summer, Andy and Catherine took Roger, Nancy, and Joel on vacation, loading up their Buick sedan with everything from a playpen to a nine-and-a-half-foot dinghy. It was the first of their many summers spent in Maine. On one sailing trip along the coast of Maine, they anchored in a small cove in Blue Hill Bay. Directly in front was a rambling farm with a barn, just the kind of barn Andy had kept animals in while growing up on Summit Ave. The next day, while driving down the road, they saw a for sale sign in front of this very house and barn. The whites immediately bought the farm and the surrounding 40 acres for $11,000. In time, a spider, a pig, a gaggle of geese, and all the other animals, including a rat that E.B. White was about to acquire, would make that barn famous. Ah. So here's the house. And there's the barn, and it says, What happens to me when I cross into Maine? I cannot describe it, but I do have the sensation of having received a gift from a true love. So you can tell it's got a barn and garage and a lot of land. And here's this picture of it. The house, the barn, the barnyard. Pig pen. And he's still alive.